Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time to dive into a new Logic game that just released on Steam. I'm going to start this off with a first look, I've already played the tutorial levels and this game is not quite as complicated as other Logic games that I played, but it goes into a freaking awesome direction I have to say and everything that has to do with Logic gates, programming, etc. is just totally up my alley. So, what is Logic Bot? I would say we're gonna have a look into the career right away. I haven't played the career just yet, so we will have to do some figuring out. It's of course a puzzle game, but in its execution it's absolutely unique. Let's start with the first challenge, the college. Smooth line. Alright, that sounds easy enough. And here we are at the workbench can see all of the little tools, this is where we are going to build our little logic bot. However, what exactly do we have to do? What is the goal? On the left hand side, down below here, we can see the objectives. Let's have a look into this. So we have to build a logic bot that follows a smooth black line, complete in a certain time frame and also cost less than 450 pounds. Okay, sounds fair enough. Let's actually view the level. There we go. Oh, this is not a very smooth line. I thought it would just go straight, but apparently we have to make sure our logic bot actually follows this line using a couple of sensors and logic. We're going to edit the robot and we're going to choose a main body. At the moment we don't have too many parts, I would assume we are gonna unlock them eventually. But this is our main body right there. Of course we're going to require a couple of wheels, so why don't we go ahead and add some of these medium wheels and oh, I actually want to add another snap point to this. Wow, this is incredible, you actually have to do everything. The tutorial helps you add a little bit, but what we want to do is select this part right here and then click on snap lines and we want to add a new snap line. Ah, okay, so you can see now we could for instance go all the way to the back as far as we can and here we're gonna add a new snap line and that's gonna be the wheels all right we're gonna confirm that and now we can actually select the wheels and they will snap to this line which is great and by the way you can also save your robot so eventually you don't have to do the beginning parts anymore you can just load them in and therefore it's worth it to plan these things out so we are gonna add another snap line and this time we want to rotate it by 90 degrees Yes, there we go. We want to add it right there. Beautiful. Good. Now we can finally add the wheels. Oh, that's great. I love it. So this is the right wheel. That means we have to make sure it's uh, rotating into this direction. So clockwise and it's the right wheel. There we go. That's what we have to select. We're going to add the left wheel as well right there. This should be rotating this way. It's the left motor. So anti-clockwise. There we go. Okay, now of course this is not going to be stable, so we're going to need a caster wheel and we want to add that right here. So we are going to need yet another snap line. I want to make sure that this is perfectly centered. There we go. That's going to be the front wheel. We're going to add the caster wheel as I said and we gotta rotate it by 90 degrees. Yeah, looking about right. I'm just gonna place this as close to the front as we can. This looks like it's going into the wrong direction. Yeah, instead we're going to rotate this by minus 90 degrees. This somehow looks a little bit better. Okay, we got our little robot built. What we still have to do is make sure we can actually detect the lines. So let's go ahead and actually build an extension. We're gonna go with a box extension and I want to have this right there. This is actually already perfect, I would say. We are also going to add another snap line so I can make sure I'm adding the stuff right where I want it. And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees and also add the mirror mode. There we go. On the outside right here, I want to place a couple of sensors that are pointing down and that will detect the line, basically. So where could the sensors be? Right there, of course. Okay. Now I just see, I need another snap line. I really want to make this as precise as possible. So we need a snap line right there as well. Cool, that should allow us to place the sensors very precisely. That's one sensor there and another one right there. Now we should rename those guys. This is the right sensor and then we got the left sensor right there. 
Theoretically, this should be all we need in order to make it through that puzzle. Therefore, I want to save this vehicle very briefly. It's going to be a new save and it's going to be the line follow bot basic or so. I don't know yet. <laughs> now it's time to actually go into a very cool part of the game, which is the circuit board. There we go. We have three parts that we can use within our circuit board. We're going with the right sensor first. Place that there. Left sensor at the bottom and then the circuit board right next to them. Now you can see the right sensor basically outputs a signal whenever it detects a line. Same thing with the left sensor. Right here on the circuit board we have two outputs signified with a red color. The other color was green, yeah. What we can do with the motor is we can turn it on and off. If you remember we hooked up the wheels with the respective motor. So whenever left motor is turned on and right motor as well then we will go straight. But when one of those motors is shut off then of course it will turn into a certain direction. Now at the bottom here I have a couple of categories. We have logic gates that we can use at the moment. We uh, have three gates. There is a fourth one, the XOR gate, that's missing at the moment. We also have functional gates which basically give out a signal. This one here is a signal splitter and then a dual switch which allows me to send certain outputs. So I have two signals that I can send anywhere I want. Right, so let's do this step by step. The first thing I want to accomplish is simply make the robot go straight. Just do its thing. So why don't we go ahead and choose a dual switch for that. We are going to probably remove this again. I just want to test this out, showing you the simple things so you can understand what's actually happening. I'm taking this input. So this uh, module here isn't dependent on another one. We can simply enable or disable the output there. No, that's wrong. I want to delete this again and make it go to the right motor. So at the moment both of these things are turned on and therefore if we check it out on the track we should be seeing our little robot at least go straight. For that of course we can click the start button right there and you can see it's actually working. It's going completely straight and you can see should the sensor go over a line, that's what we now have to program, it should shut off this wheel for instance and therefore turn around. However, it's not doing it right now. So we go back to the circuit board and get rid of this dual switch. Okay, let's think about this logically. What we want is a constant signal on the left and right motor, except one of these sensors is on. So we're probably going to need a, a signal splitter and not gates. Let's prepare a couple of not gates right here. We're going to need two. And then we're also going to need two AND gates. Where am I gonna place those? Maybe here at the bottom? Now, usually I want those things to be turned on the entire time, right? That means if we simply hook up the NOT gate to the left motor and to the right motor, those signals will be always on as long as we don't have a signal on the NOT gate. Now we're going to need a constant signal, which we're going to accomplish with a dual switch. And I think I'm actually gonna move those gates upwards. Yeah guys, I have to think about this a little bit. Give me a break. So the first input should be this one and the second one should be right there. Right sensor goes here and left sensor goes there. That means whenever the right sensor is shooting and this one here is constantly on, I'm just gonna leave this on. That means both of these signals are gonna be true and therefore the left motor is gonna shut off. Is that right? When the right sensor detects something, then the right motor should shut off. We have to do it the other way around, kind of crossing here. You can actually also select the color wires and you can also route the wires into certain directions. So for instance, I could uh, right click here, I think, let me do that, yeah. And I could just take a path like that if I wanted to. But there we go, that theoretically should work. Let's actually test it out. What is going to happen? So the right sensor is gonna detect something very soon and Therefore, the motors should shut off. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, nothing is happening. Hmm, I thought this was a nifty solution. Oh, you know what? I think the sensors are pointing the wrong way. They are pointing upwards. Ah, such a silly mistake. Move the par. Ba -ba 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 yeah, there you go. <laughs> now it's pointing down. Great, let's try this again. Ooh, I just see an error here. Of course, at the beginning here, it detects a black line, both of them, and therefore the wheels are not going. What a bummer, they don't even make it easy for the first puzzle. Well, it's actually not a bummer, I'm, I'm glad for a challenge here. 
Look at that. You can even hook up certain signals with an LED light. So you can indicate when something goes wrong or certain signals go off. This game is crazy. Right, so basically what we have to detect is if both sensors are detecting the line, then we need to do something. So let's create an AND gate. I'm going to place that here and we're going to take those signals. Actually, we need to split them up because I do need the first signal as well. So we're probably going to need two signal splitters like so. We're going to split that up into this direction and this is going to be crazy with the wiring. We're just going to go with it. So there we go. These are going to be hooked up to the AND gate. Now we know when both sensors detect a line, then we also want to activate the motors. So what we could do is add a couple of OR gates. What do you think? Two OR gates right there. And instead of going here, we want to go there and hook this up to the left motor. We do the same thing with the right one. So what that basically means is either of these inputs is going to activate the output. So these NOT gates can activate the output or the fact that both sensors detect something. So do we need yet another splitter? I think so. Yeah, unfortunately. Let's add another splitter. This one goes here. This one goes there. And this one goes here. I hope you can follow my logic still. It's not too bad. <laughs> it's going to be much worse in the future, I presume. How about that? I think that might work out. Let's test this out. Okay, it, it actually worked. You know, we, we could already start off. Now let's see how it turns around when it detects the line. Oh, please do something. It doesn't do anything. Oh, of course, I totally forgot to hook those guys up again. Yeah. <laughs> so right sensor goes there and left sensor goes here. Beautiful. Once again, test drive. <laughs> this time it should work out. We're going slightly towards the right, which... Oh, oh, I think it, it already did something. No, it's just my imagination. Oh, please. Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Oh, guys, I think we can do this. Come on, turn around. Turn around. We cannot take corners that are sharper than that. We might run into issues. Uh, no, no, so far so good. Oh, we're just on the edge here, please. Wow, this is extremely exciting. This is unbelievable. Just looking at that usually would bore the heck out of me. But since I made this functional myself, do we have to be below 1 minute and 15 seconds? Can we even do that? Doesn't make it easy that there is a time limit, but I guess that's not going to be the hardest challenge. But you need to have a proper solution. Level complete? Ah, well, okay, it's not a necessity to do it within a certain time frame. It's just like a medal you would get. Cost 505, gates used 11. So I could do this much more elegantly if I wanted to. Now tight bends would be the next thing. And that requires us to add even more sensors to be more precise. Now there's one more thing I haven't mentioned yet. And that is actual mathematical functionality. I have no idea how they are going to do this in future puzzles. But what you basically have available is certain gates that allow you to add numbers and then translate them into boolean so for instance you could check if a certain input is greater than five then this signal should be active etc etc so i have no i this is going to be crazy guys and i hope you actually enjoy it and there we go guys this is the solution the tutorial actually provides to you which of course is much slicker it uses two less and gates i believe but you can see it's basically doing the same thing i was attempting to do splitting up the left and right sensors putting them into a NOT gate that is hooked up to an OR gate and also both of them are connected to an AND gate which again is split up between those two OR gates and naturally the OR gates are hooked up to the motors. This uses a little bit less cash. I'm not sure how you could do this any slicker because the budget for this one is actually 450 and we are using 475 so I'm not sure. Maybe once we unlock a couple of parts we will be able to do a better solution maybe with an XOR gate for instance. However there's one more thing I would like to show you so let's actually hop out of here. The next time we're gonna continue with the next puzzle which is of course not going to work with our current bot. If we have a look at the level, you can see the curves are going to be much sharper and therefore we're going to run into a couple of issues that we have to adjust with multiple sensors. Anyways, what I want to show you is an actual tutorial level just so that I can show you parts that we haven't seen yet. Which are the comparisons? Wow, this is crazy. So you can actually compare things they also have in and outputs and they deal with actual numbers. 
So for instance, here we have a greater than gate. If the first input is greater than the second input, then it will output a signal. And you can see it is indeed green because 10 is bigger than 5. And everything is, you know, basically straightforward as such. We have also a couple of math gates in the game, so that's going to be quite interesting. We can do basic math such as addition, subtraction and so on and so forth. So this is pretty straightforward. 10 plus 5 equals 15. So the tutorial wants to run us through an easy example here. We want the motor to be on if output 1 is equal to 10. So let's go ahead and actually get that equal thing. I'm gonna place it right there and also we need a static value. Cool. The static value we can actually set to 10. So that's what we're going to do. And then we can hook this one up to the first number. So if the first number is equal to the second number, then we want the motor to be on. We can test the circuit. This is something you apparently can only do in the tutorial. I haven't seen it otherwise yet. Okay, next task is the motor should be only on if output 1 is greater than 5 and output 2 is less or equal to 5. So let's do that. We want a less than or equal and we also want a greater than and then we also need a static value number generator. So we're gonna add number 5 here and then number 5 here as well. Okay, output 1 should be greater than 5 so we're gonna hook that up and output 2 should be less or equal to 5. So if both of these things are true, we can of course use an AND gate, hook this up to the motor output or input. Never sure if output or input, but I hope you know what I mean. Let's test this bad boy. Good job. Why? Thank you. Motor only on when the sum of the outputs is less than 4 or greater than 12. Wow, that's amazing. I cannot imagine in what kind of puzzles those things could be used, you know, considering it's all about the logic bots. This is going to be crazy, guys. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, we need less than 4 and greater than 12. Man, not 512, greater than 12. Okay, we need a greater than and we also need a less than. Next up, we're going to need an adder right there, addition. We want to add some 1 or output 1 and output 2 together. Then we are going to need a signal splitter, which I would have liked to place here, but... We're just gonna go with the flow. We're gonna split up the sum. The first one is gonna go into this one and the second one into this. Now we want if the sum is less than 4 or if the sum is greater than 12 then we want to output the signal and of course it's already in the sentence we need an OR gate. Either one of these signals can activate the motor. Let's do the test. Yay! Okay, this also worked out. Last challenge right here. We want the motor to be on if one of the outputs is greater than or equal to 5 and the motor's direction is reversed when output 1 is less than 5. Wow. Let's get rid of everything. We want this to be clean. So this time we're gonna use the motor direction reverse. So if this signal here is on, then the motor is gonna be reversed. That's important. Okay, let's think this through. I might want to start with an OR gate and then we need to calculate these numbers. So if they are above 5, then we want to send a signal, right? So let's do a greater than. Oh, actually it's greater than or equal. Yeah, that's what we want. So if this output is greater than or equal to, let's add a static value of 5. And we could do this with a splitter this time, because we're gonna need the number 5 several times. So we're gonna add that and that. Is this an OR gate? Yes indeed. So we can hook those guys up. If either of those signals are on, then we want the motor to actually also turn on. However, if output 1 is less than 5, then we want the motor direction to turn. So let's add a less than right here. And of course we would need another splitter to accomplish that, right? Yeah, oh man, this is always so chaotic in the beginning because I don't know how many modules I'm gonna need in the end. But we're gonna hook this up to the splitter instead and the first cable is gonna go here and the second cable right there. So if output 1 is less than 5, we have another signal that we can use here. We're gonna compare that with our output 1 and then we can simply take it to there, right? Of course, we would have to rearrange this once we know how many modules we require and what needs to be hooked up 
but you get the basic gist. Let's test the circuit as well. We can actually see it go through the various numbers and possibilities and here is the test motor. So this is a pretty cool mode. Now the circuit wasn't quite right, I did something wrong here. So maybe this is a good time to rearrange a few things. Let me quickly do that and give us a better overview. Okay, there we go. I think this is much more overviewish. Now we have a signal splitter for the output one, which is going into the bigger than comparison and it's comparing to the number five. And if that is true, we are outputting a signal to the OR gate, which enables the motor. Same thing for output two, it compares the number and goes to the OR gate. We also have the number five split up into checking this gate here and also checking if output one is smaller than five. And if that is the case, the motor's direction is gonna be turned. This, this has to work, this simply has to work. Ah, I missed this little word here, when only one of the outputs is greater. That means instead of this OR gate, we're simply going to need an X OR gate, right? Because that only gives off a signal if one of the inputs is active, so they have to be different. Whew, okay, I think we figured it out, guys. Oops, I forgot to <laughs> hook up the output, I'm sorry. Yay, we did it! We freaking did it! And that was only the tutorial. I cannot wait until we reach the point of the career where we get to these puzzles. It's gonna be crazy. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, write in the comment section what you think about the game. With that out of the way, have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye bye.